So what the hell is gamma? And why is it so important? Well, gamma is the total dynamic range of all colors, hue and saturation in black and white. It's just kind of everything. It's the entire palette, if you will. So with color gamma and computers, uh, you need to have a certain amount of color gamma to be able to see your photos correctly. That's the whole point of this. So there's different measurements on how to see gamma. And, you know, back in the day, monitors had really terrible gamma or the video cards had really terrible gamma. And really gamma starts with a video card. And so in all my systems, I use NVIDIA video cards. Uh, simply because gaming video cards just give you better image quality, better control, better gamma, and it also makes Photoshop run faster, which is kind of a key point. So there's this site. It's been around for a really long time. It's called um, legom.nl, so L-A-G-O-M dot N-L. Just a, a website that has a bunch of tests on it for your monitor. And it'll test uh, millisecond performance and all this other stuff. But the best thing that it has is this gamma chart. And this is the one thing that I use when I start looking at stuff. And it gives you a good representation of where your gamma is at. And it, you'll see this better in a second. But one thing I, I didn't really get into is when I did the color calibration video, I glazed over the gamma settings and how to check those settings because you really don't know unless you have this site up. So let me just show you what I'm talking about here. Basically, it has your chart of gamma going down the side. And you've got these lines of contrast coming down. And it's where the contrast blends into a solid color is where your gamma line is at. And you'll see right here on this monitor, I'm pretty much 2.2, 2.2, and then over here, probably a little closer to 2.1, which is pretty good. That's the gamma that I'm looking for. And on these monitors, let me bring up the menu here so you can actually see what's going on. Let me go to, actually, I'm in the right one. So what do you know? So in this one, I've got this little gamma thing where it says gamma 2. I can go to gamma 1, and you'll notice right off the bat that this changes. So this goes pretty much right up to 1.9, and then about 2 over here, and then 2.2 in the dark. And then if I pull that up again, go back up. Oh, I'm never really good at getting into these things. So that's gamma 3. I'm going to go back here and select gamma 1. And gamma 1, it again, drops it down to about, let's say it's like 2.2 .2 here, um, 2 here, and probably 2.1 there. Go back here and then go back to my gamma and then set this on gamma 2. This is the reason why they're not labeled 1.8, 2.2, and 2.4 is because they don't know what gamma the video card is putting out. So that's kind of the problem. So here at gamma 2, everything is pretty much straight across the board at, at 2.2. Um, my 10% is between 2.1 and 2.2. That's just kind of where it blends together. I just showed you this in the video, but this is what's actually capturing on my computer. Now, the way that you look at this is wherever the colors seem to blend together across a line is pretty much what your gamma is. So right now, on my monitor, I'm getting 2.2 pretty much all the way across, which is pretty much what you want. Now, let me just show you the difference between the two. So let me pull this up. We'll compare these. And I made these comparison images, hoping that this illustrates pretty much what we're looking at. So Gamma 1.1, which is more cheaper devices, and usually it's um, maybe mid-range cell phones, uh, a lot of really crappy um, $100 tablets, uh, maybe like small LCD monitors that are like for backup cameras, that sort of thing. And then you have uh, Gamma 1.8, which is pretty much inexpensive laptops, um, inexpensive monitors, inexpensive desktop computers. And then you have Gamma 2.2, which is a lot better. 
and this is pretty much where you want to edit photos. Hopefully you're looking at this uh, on a computer that has Gamma 2.2 so you can see how smooth this is and how smooth these gradients are and what a good gradient range we, we have. But if not, then you're seeing that this gradient range and this gradient range are the same, then you're definitely Gamma 1.8. If it looks like all three of these are the same, then you've got some pretty crappy Gamma going on. But anyway, uh, just looking at this, if we zoom in to the center, you'll see the difference in gradient. Like look at the bottom corners of the blues, the reds. Here it's more magenta, we've got more orange tones. That's because those are the tones that are actually there. Uh, versus what your monitor might display that might be something more like this. But you can see if you have Gamma 2.2 that there's a huge range here. So if we look at our actual gradients, uh, and these are all in the exact same spot, you can see how much darker the 1.8, or sorry, the 1.1 is versus the 1.8 versus the 2.2. Uh, so really it's, it's all about dynamic range and it's not what your camera produces but more of what your video card and monitor produces. Now as I said before, Gamma is created pretty much by the video card and then it's up to the monitor to display it and hopefully the monitor is good enough to display it. The majority of the monitors out there today, especially something that you buy new, will show Gamma 2.2. Graphic design monitors will show 2.4 to Gamma 3.0, depending upon what it is that you actually have. There you go, in a nutshell. Kind of a weird way to look at it, but that's, that's essentially what it is. So that's how you actually check the Gamma on your monitor, and this is how I set it on my monitors. Now, this monitor and this monitor are Gamma 2, so are these two monitors right here, those are also Gamma 2, but I've got these monitors at home in my home office as well, and for some reason that one has to be on Gamma 1 to get 2.2. So I don't know why it changes, because it has the same video card that these do. You know, it's really strange. Uh, this one's a 1050, the one at home is a 1050, and this one's a 1060. So those are what I'm using for video cards, NVIDIA 1060s and 1050s. Anyway, let me show you where it blows up. You really want Gamma 2.2 because that's going to match a 12 to 14 bit file as far as the amount of information that's being displayed in it. And that's, that's really what you need. So when does this not work? Well, this is a perfect example over here. This is my little Nugget computer and this is uh, not exactly the most exciting thing. This is an Acer Spin. It's touch screen. It's like a gigantic tablet. And I bought this last year uh, basically to be able to shoot tethered to the camera and, you know, to be able to like go through photos with clients. Now, this is an uncalibrated screen, so it's, you know, I still have to recalibrate this thing. So what you see here is it's 48% on the 48% chart, I'm getting 1.4 and on 25%, I'm actually getting 1.8. 1.6 and then on the 10% chart I'm getting 1.8 and this is crap and there's nothing I can do about this. Why? Because this is an Intel graphics driven uh, laptop and it does have a GFX in it, a 1050 and that does get enabled in Photoshop so in Photoshop it seems to be okay. It, You know, it, f files do look a little contrast here in Photoshop than they do on my other computer, but it's good enough. It's not a big deal. But the problem is just working within Windows or getting online or anything, the bit depth of the uh, Intel graphics driver is only 6-bit. And, you know, a way to get around this is a lot of people on older computers have been able to uh, download older drivers, older Intel drivers that give them 8-bit color. And that's kind of what you need to do. But unfortunately, this is all done through this Acer update thing. And I cannot get it to go to 8-bit. So that's kind of, that sucks. So if I'm using Sony's uh, capture tethering utility, um, I'm seeing everything in 6-bit. There's nothing I can do to it. 
let's see if we can improve this. So one thing I did do was I went to Preferences, Performance, and then under the Use Graphics Processor, I went under Advanced Settings, and I clicked on 30-bit display. And did that help? Uh, the answer is no, it did not. So the lesson learned here is if you buy a cheap tablet-style laptop, you're going to get cheap tablet-style performance. Anyway, we can go to Edit, and then let's go to Color Settings. And then if we went to, from North America General Purpose 2, to Monitor Color, that gives us Gamma 2.2 and basically says that we're using Monitor Color. Now, this might be fine if I'm using my calibrated profile. We're not yet, but let's see if that, I had to close Photoshop to make those changes take effect. Let me open it back up again and see if we're getting Gamma 2.2 now, and I'm guessing we're not. No, although the Gamma did actually improve. So we've got between 1.4 and 1.5 on 25%, and now we're at between 1.6 and 1.7 on 10%. Let's recalibrate the confuser and see what happens here, and hopefully this will help a little. And so we got a little bit better results. So I'm seeing 1.4 uh, for 48 percent, 1.6 for 25, and 1.7. So why is this laptop like this? This is kind of a common theme now with laptops. I went into the BIOS on this particular computer and tried to shut off the Intel graphics driver and said to make it use the NVIDIA one only. Unfortunately, that didn't really change it in the operating system. It's still using the Intel driver. So kind of baffled as to why that is. Now the reason why Intel drivers are now 6-bit instead of 8-bit is because by reducing the amount of graphics power you're extending the battery life. That's how they're getting 10 hours of batteries out of this thing. So really it's more my fault for being cheap and not like getting a Windows Surface Pro, which is what I should have got to begin with, but I didn't. We could try one more test. Let's plug in a secondary monitor and see what that does on there. Now things got even more interesting. So what I did was I hooked up this display, and right now it's just kind of a secondary desktop to this one. And my gamma has completely changed on this one. So now I'm at, uh, wow, what am I at? 2.7 and 2.1 and 2.2. So that is way different. So it's definitely something to do with the display, obviously, because, yeah, that's that's huge. So how do I correct this to keep it that way? I don't know. I'm baffled. I'd love to have this display a Gamma 2.2, and then I could just use it like all my other monitors and all my other computers. But it won't do that, and it's it's really unusual. So if I unplug this monitor, my secondary, and just oh my, okay, all right, now, so it's actually holding those gamma settings. That is weird. Just really unusual. I I don't know. I'm kind of baffled by this but I would love to be able to keep the gamma just like this. But I don't think I'm gonna be able to. I'm pretty sure once I reboot, it's gonna say no. So anyway, if you're using one of these laptops that uses uh, basically an Intel graphics driver for its main driver and then an NVIDIA gaming driver anytime you pull up any software that's using NVIDIA gaming, if you want to seriously edit photos on this, I highly recommend that you hook up another display because doing that and extending your des desktop brings the gamma level like way up to where it should be. So really, really screwy. That is gamma and the reason why you need gamma. So I hope you guys like this video. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what your gamma results are if you go to this website. I'm kind of curious to see what everybody discovers that they're at especially if you use a tablet or a laptop to actually edit your photos. I'm really curious to see what you guys find. Anyway, 
Uh, we'll talk to you guys later. See ya.